Hello, hello everybody, and welcome to the Journey to Mythic Limited Edition. Last month I focused a lot on Constructed, uh, but this month I wanted to try a Journey to Mythic uh, in Limited because they have made several changes to it uh, that I want to try out. So my starting rank is Bronze 2. Uh, not a super high rank, but it's really easy to rank up in Bronze. But uh, people a lot of the time on my channel request MTG Arena Draft, so here you go. Okadoke. So we are going to be using my 5 pick method. Um, just basically taking the best card out of every pack. Oh, also, if you want to see me ranking up live, you can check out my Twitch stream, twitch.tv slash Nikolai Bolas. There will be a link to that in the description. Uh, leave a follow and then come hang out when I go live. Um, but, so basically in this, I'm going to go through the draft and then I'm going to show certain matches. I'm not going to show every single match, obviously, because but I'll show multiple matches. Okay, so now that that's out of the way, uh, Kaya Urz Orzov Usurper, not really a card you can play in Limited. It just doesn't do enough uh, of what you need. One second, just double check. Yeah, audio's on. It basically just, it doesn't do anything for limited purposes because you don't really care about graveyard hate in limited. The life gain isn't relevant and exiling like one converted mana cost creatures just doesn't really uh, come up that often because there's not a ton of one drops. I mean, the minus also doesn't even kill creatures. So basically Kaya is not a card you would take. The only reason you would consider it is because you want to like build your collection on MTG Arena, which is definitely a fair thing, but I'm not going to be doing that here because I just want to climb. Gatebreaker Ram, a card you can take and build around early. However, I think when it comes to gate payoffs, Gatebreaker Ram is the worst one in terms of limited because you usually, I think you want to start with Gates Ablaze if you're going to go for a Gates deck because the Gates deck uh, needs a way to catch up after being really slow in the early game and Gatebreaker Ram doesn't really do that. It still just dies to a lot of the removal. Hackrobat is a card that I do think is quite strong. Uh, it is the front runner out of the pack so far. Uh, the, just, it's a, the body for three mana is just fine because it'll trade with anything thanks to Death Touch. It can get in for a lot of damage. And a lot of the time you'll be spectacling it for two mana so you can hold up the Death Touch in the same turn or even play it alongside a two drop. So that's my uh, front runner for pick, but I'm not going to click it yet. Uh, Screaming Shield is a card that I did lose to earlier in the format. Um, I lost to it in my last video, actually. It was pretty brutal. Uh, the card just milled me out. But I think that's a very like specific scenario where I was kind of a control deck. He was kind of a control deck. It just didn't line up well for my deck. So I don't think Screaming Shield is a high pick. 10th District Guardian's bad. Uh, Civic Stalwart is a card that I've been relatively impressed with, but that's only because I thought the card was pretty and it actually turned out to be, like, decent. So, definitely a card that I will play. Uh, Persistent Petitioners, not really a great card. Not much to say here. You don't really mill people out that often. Uh, Chillbringer is actually really close with Hackerbat for me right now. Um, not really certain which one I'm supposed to take between the two. Chillbringer is one of those cards that when you play it on curve, it feels very, very good. It's very also great in multiples. Uh, if you can go Chillbringer into Chillbringer, then you oftentimes can win that game just by tempoing them out. Dead Revel's a card I don't need to take super early. I think it's a fine card. Dead is Transport, a bit expensive for the effect, though I do need to test it out at some point just to double check that my theory is correct on that. Deface is a bad sideboard card. Spear Spear, I think, is just uh, the symmetrical effect. You can't really build your deck in a way that you always have an advantage from this, so I don't think it's great and limited. Uh, Rubble Pelt Recluse, not really a card that I'm looking for. Sorrowform Hybrid is also a really nice card. So here, I'm picking between Hackerbat, Chillbringer, and Sorrowform Hybrid. Um, hmm. I think I overvalue Sorrowform Hybrid a lot. I think it is a good card, but I think I overvalue it a little bit. I think it's a little worse than I think it is, just because I really put high value on this type of effect, but it does cost six mana. So I think it's between Hackerbat and Chillbringer. Hmm. Hmm. I think I'm going to go with Chillbringer. I think it's just a little bit stronger. Okie doke, pick two. We're just going to kind of pretend that we don't have a Chillbringer for the purposes of making this pick because we don't want to be uh, too biased in terms of uh, our like cards early because we want to find the open guild, figure out what the bots are passing us. Though, if this was real life, we'd just be figuring out the players. Forbidding Spirit's fine. Usually it's just a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three that's a little bit harder to cast than you would expect, uh, but it can do good work uh, in, in decks. I've definitely had situations where paying... I haven't had situations come up where paying the two was super relevant, but I'm sure that they do come up. Also, I like that it shows the flavor text, because I like flavor text. Ministry to Obligation is my front runner for this pack. Uh, three mana two one can oftentimes trade with a card, and then you get the two one ones. Uh, and just think about the fact that you would probably pay three mana to get two one one flying tokens, and then you just get the extra two one stapled on, so that's pretty good value. I think it's a very good card. Spire Mangler is an effective card. It can kind of ambush something and function as a removal spell in certain cases, because it can't target itself. 
but it's just a three mana two one a lot of the time as well. So I think I think this card's really good, but I think it competes with Ministrant of Obligation. Imprisoned Orator, basically just a two drop, you'll play it sometimes. Exposed to Daylight, Cyborg card, Cyborg card. Feral Maka, a card that I have played, but you don't really prioritize it. Same with Brush Strider, Mammoth Spider's fine. Um, Final Payment is quite nice, and the Imperious Oligarch is pretty good. I think Ra Rafter Demon's unplayable. Uh, just both sides are too inefficient for what they give you. I'm not taking Gates until I know what killed I'm in. And then Senate Griffin is quite uh, strong as well, but I think it's worse than the Ob Minister. So I think it's Minister, then Spire Mangler, and then Senate Griffin, and then Final Payment. Well, the, maybe Final Payment and Senate Griffin would be switched. Probably not, though. I'm just, just going to take the Minister here. Okie doke. So here we get another pack to look at. I think Gateway Sneak is really good. Uh, you oftentimes don't even need to have that many gates for it to be great because sometimes they just won't have an early creature to block it. It works really nicely with combat tricks because they're basically always going to block it. And uh, if you do have a gate, it's just devastating. Uh, Collision Colossus is really nice. And Gruel, definitely a card to keep in mind. And then we have the Order again, just mediocre. I think Undercity's Embrace is pretty bad. Just usually they're going to be, a lot of the time they're going to be able to sacrifice something that doesn't even matter or is not relevant. I think Burn Bright is part of the cool deck that I've actually gotten to face. Uh, you play the goblin card that makes multiple goblins, and then you try to play as many copies of that as you can, and then a burn bright to finish them off. Um, Thought Collapse is a card that I'll, I'll play one copy of, but I'm not super excited. But I think Sorrowful Hybrid is definitely the only like other good card in this pack after Gateway Sneak and Collision. Uh, so I think these three are like the main three. I don't hate Storm Strike, but I'm not like a huge fan of it. I think I'm going to take the Gateway Sneak. It just feels like the best card to me. Okie doke. So there is another kind of gate payoff, um, but I don't like to take the gate payoffs unless I have gates ablaze. That's kind of my stance. <laughs> Welcome, Hamani7, to the stream. Uh, appreciate you tuning in, and thanks for uh, saying hello. I uh, really enjoy bringing you content as well. Force gates. Yeah, I'm not going to be forcing gates this time. I do want to rank up if I can. Here, I think I'm going to take the Senate Griffin. All these other cards are just kind of dirty. I think Sphinx's Inside is a trap. It's just too inefficient to actually be a good card in limited. So Senate Griffin, I'm gonna really, I really like having a lot of flyers, in, because then you can just gum up the ground and then win in the air. I think Sentinel's Mark is fine, but nothing special. Sometimes the life gain's relevant. Sometimes you can ambush the guy, and when you ambush, use it as a combat trick and keep your guy alive. It's actually pretty effective. But Senate Griffin is really nice as well. And it looks like the bots are giving us blue white, but then we see a skewer of the critics, and we're immediately questioning. I don't. Even though Azori's Gateway worked with the Gateway Sneak, I don't love taking the gate here. I just think it's a little bit too uh, slow. I think Swirling Torrent is a good card. I haven't gotten a chance to play with it yet, but I think there's a decent chance that Prowling Caracol call wheels. And I think we've kind of found our lane here. This is a pretty strong uncommon. I think Skewer the Critics is good as well, but it doesn't work with any of our other cards, and I think that uh, we can just kind of commit here. Okie doke. There is an Imperious Oligarch in this pack. We could just play this, so... You just play Senate Griffin and Ministrant. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm, tr I'm trying it out. I'm doing the Journey to Mythic series for Limited this month, so I can give some people the arena content that they want. There's definitely uh, pros and cons. I'm, I get to talk about the cards in a lot more detail, which is definitely something I really do enjoy being able to do. Uh, Imperious Oligarch versus the Gate is actually kind of close for me. But I think I'm going to go with the Oligarch. I think there's a small but... De like small chance I could end up in uh, into Orzhov, and I don't want to miss out on that opportunity because I was unwilling to take a, uh, a good creature. Here, Steeple Creeper is fine, but I'm not going to take that here. Carry on Imp I think is the best card in the pack. You're undefeated in this format. That's pretty impressive, not me. How many how many drafts have you played? That's the immediate question that comes to my mind. Uh, Sentinel's Mark is fine. Has the Officer not is like fine. I'm just gonna take the Carry on Imp here. Uh, maybe move into the Azorius deck that I mentioned before. Final payment, that nice little uh, payoff for being Azorius. Getting it pick eight is definitely a signal, and I'm pretty glad that I uh, kind of took my own advice and was a bit more conservative. Here we're gonna take the Dead Rebels, and uh, looks like fi another final payment pretty much signals Azorius is open. That was a, a turn, a, a pivotal pick, shall we say, the uh, Imperial Oligarch. Heck yeah, Nami. Good work. Good work. So, uh, pretty pretty happy to be able to be in an Orzhov now. I'm going to take the Orzhov locket. Sometimes Orzhov decks want it. I'll take a Blade Brand. Junk Troller. Yeah, that's not happening. We'll take the Crocodile. The old Croc. Yeah, I guess we'll take the Uncommon. We're not going to be Rakdos. Uncommons are 
a little bit better to take at the end of drafts if you are on Arena because they uh, fill up your vault a tiny bit faster. So let's just get rid of these blue cards. Remember that this Senate Griffin can be a... Uh, and get rid of the Crocodile. Senate Griffin can be a white card. It looks like this is where we were supposed to be. Uh, there's another Sorrowform hybrid, but it doesn't look like that's where we're going to be. Oh, Goblin Gathering was the card I was talking about earlier when I was mentioning Burn Bright. So now we've, that we've kind of settled into our lane, we can just start taking the best uh, Orzov cards, and uh, Orzov Enforcer is really, really good. You'll pay for you pay, you'll pay what you owe with your money or your life. That's really good. Do they all have flavor text? That's weird. Like, see, this card doesn't have flavor text, but now on Arena it does. That's super awesome. Law is the voice of reason. Or maybe they just don't write down the flavor text on Arena because all these cards seem to have flavor text. Weird. Huh. But always have Enforcer clear pick here. Okie doke. Now we can take either Summary Judgment, Senate Griffin. We could take a Depose and maybe like Splash Blue for the that part and then maybe Splash a Chillbringer or a Swirling Torrent. But that's not really where I want to be at. I, there's strong options in my main color, so I would rather just take those. Um, hmm. Um, I think it's between these two, and I think, since I already have two final payments, I'd rather just take a good flyer. I think good flyers are important, and I think that the, uh, the two-mana removal spell is a bit of a trap sometimes because you can't always use it effectively. Ooh, dagger caster, the combo with blade brand. There's also a get the point, so we could just splash that. Kind of want to try that combo. I'm not sure how effective it is. Uh, off of the splash, but Dagger Caster seems like it can do good work. And uh, Orzov seems like a more controlling combination that could find the combo. What am I taking it over? A carry on imp? I get the point. I'll take the Dagger Caster. Maybe try to assemble the combo. Consigned to the pit. Nice removal effect. I think Sphinx of the Guild Pact is a bit slow. Like seven mana is a lot. Ooh, another Orzov Enforcer. I really like seeing Orzov Enforcer. Uh, I like it more than Summary Judgment because it'll trade off with a creature pretty much guaranteed, and then I get a 1-1, one, one, so I end up up a little bit of a resource there. Uh, I wouldn't mind an Arrestor's Zeal. So Syndicate Messenger's also great. I think we found the Open Guild. Ooh, the deck Bedevil. This is really good. Black, black, plus 3, minus 3, really effective card. Um, it's going to be better than Final Payment because once you have more than two Final Payments, you kind of start to... Um, the life loss becomes relevant then. I think Night of Last Breath is, like, very expensive for what it does. I think Bedeck Bedazzle is just a lot better. Okay, so now it's between clear the stage. How many big creatures do I have? None. I have no big creatures. Okay, I think this card's really bad unless you have big creatures. So I think you would play it in a Gruel deck splashing. But uh, I'm going to just take the uh, Rakdos Guild Gate. Help me fix my mana. Don't really need the Noxious Grodion. Grudion. Okie doke. Grotesque Demise. This late is a huge signal. Really happy to pick it up. Another Rakdos Guildgate. Not going to be splashing the rest of that. I guess I'll just take the Uncommon. Following that strategy I mentioned earlier. Where you can fill up your vault faster. Um, so all the cards that I wanted from this pack the first time around are still here. Hmm. I could take a Viscopa, but I don't really want to. I think I'm just going to take another Rakdos Guildgate. And then I can play, like, one Mountain and splash that guy. I like having the combat trick. That is Transport. Not great, but... Okie doke. Ooh, on color gold double card. That's really nice to see. Uh, definitely taking this card. It's way better than everything else in the pack for me. Definitely better than Plague White. Let's double check my two drops. I have a couple of Orzov Enforcers and an Imperious Oligarch, so my two drop. Solid. And Basilica Bell Haunt's quite nice. It may not be as powerful as some of the other ones, but it's really nice still. Okay, um, I don't mind playing another two drop. Um, how many four drops do I have? I'm not playing the Debtor's Transport. I have one, two, three, four. That's more of a late game card. One, two, three four. So I could play another one if I wanted to, but I think Carry On Imp will wheel. So I'll just take this. Theater of Horrors. That's another card worth splashing. Um, I think it's going to be better than uh, Get the Point in terms of splashing, just because it's going to be drawing me an extra card every turn, which is super effective. Uh, get the Point would be nice, but I already have a decent amount of removal. 
I'm glad that I was already splashing this color. Here, between Syndicate, Messenger, and Imperious Oligarch, I think the flyer is a little bit better. Hmm. I'm gonna take the flyer. Yeah, it's close. I don't want Cry of the Carnarium. It hurts a lot of my own stuff, like kills my own afterlife creatures. It's definitely between these two cards. Karen, it definitely third place there. I really like, but I do only have, I guess I have four two drops. I'll take the Syndicate. Ooh, another Bedeck Bedazzle. That's really nice. Bedeck Bedazzle. I could take that or I could take Get the Point. I'll take the Bedeck Bedazzle. It's a little bit cheaper. And another Rakdos Gate. And I get the point. At this point, I have enough to confidently splash that. And another uh, Dagger Caster. My splash is working out really nicely. Unfortunately, I didn't get a second Blade Brand. Then I'd be in really good shape, but now I can fire off the Dagger Caster and have it work out. I'm not going to splash a double red card, but I guess I'll take it. This card's actually really good. I don't know why people wouldn't take it, because it keeps the stats until the end of your next turn, so it's actually like pretty effective. But, uh... We'll take the uncommon. We're not actually going to play that card ever. Another Rakdos Guild Gate. They don't really prioritize the gates, do they? Another consigned to the pit. We already have a couple of unconditional removal spells. We're just going to take the carry on him. Take the uncommon. Ooh, what a draft. This is looking really strong. Hey, we got 40 gems. I'll claim those. We will claim those. Okay, so now let's... I think this mode is a little bit more helpful for building decks. So, we got four, five guild gates. So we don't need a single mountain if we have five guild gates. Because that's five sources of red. And this card's a black card, so that we have four red cards and five sources of red. We do need more planes. So, do we have more? No, there's a double white card. No, we want more planes. Shoot. I guess I have to switch modes. Do, 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 do. Five, six. So there's 11, 15, 16. 18. So this is 7, 5. This is 12. This gives me 7... I think I just want this because I have nine red so nine black sources here. I also have the Basilica Bell Haunt. I have the Orzov Locket, which is nice, I think. Okay, let's just look at the curve a little bit. Okay, so let's cut one carry on imp. This is a two drop basically, and then we'll cut a Plague White. Let's look at, and then we'll, this is our 40. And we have 13% is awfully low. That's why the algorithm is messed up, because it counts them as gold cards. But if we look at our gold cards, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 white cards. So yeah, 8 plain seems good, especially because these are double white. Um, and this looks quite nice. Let's just double check there's no card we want to play. Maybe we'd rather have Carry On Imp than Arrestor's Zeal. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Because we just want to have creatures so we can get them back and be grindy. The life gain's also nice. And, uh, this is going to be the deck, and I hope you'll, uh, stay with me for some of the matches. Hello, and welcome to the first match with this deck. I guess it's best of one, so it's just a game, but we'll keep this hand. We have Great 2-drop into Great 3-drop. And also a removal spell. Graphics. I have all my custom stuff on. Ooh, that's a nice two drop. Let's just play this one. It attacks for a little bit more than this guy. Okay, we're fine trading off. 
because we end up with a 1 1. That's the beauty of the afterlife. And this thing has vigilance, so we'll have to deal with it eventually. Just want to make sure my CPU is doing okay. So we did the damage, that's good. gotta get out of bronze. I feel so ashamed. I mean, it's because I, the season just started, so I'm not really ashamed. Oh, okay. Let's send with the goons. Warzov Enforcer. And we'll just trade the 1-1 one -one token with the Viscope of Empire. Our deck is very strong. I think our mana base may be constructed a little bit off, but I think it's fine. Maybe we were supposed to cut one plane. No, I don't think we were, because we have double white cards. Oh, that's what the big downside is. That's why I like final payment, because you can like use it in response. Okay, we'll block. Sure, we traded our. We don't really care about his life total. And there's a land, that's nice. Hmm. We'll not attack. Next turn we can start attacking. We can hold up our final payment to like sacrifice it in response. Fake tokens, kill guys. Noxious Groovy on me, don't say. Looking for that Rakdos Guildgate. We probably could have attacked with our 2 3 there. Yeah, that's probably a little bit of a mistake. Sure. Sure, we'll take three. He hasn't played anything worth killing. He only has one card left. Ooh, that's really good for me. I have a lot of gas in the tank. Chip, chip, chip away. We'll block the Death Toucher. Ooh, that's such a favorable trade for us that we don't care that we're taking six. Now our 1 1 can hold back this guy. but he's getting back two pretty bad creatures. Uh -oh. Okay, that's a good draw. No attacks. We need our 2-3 to hold. 
Hold the line, as they say. this legs on that guy okay so we're in pretty great shape here There we go. That's what I like to see. I'm going to win this race, I think, fairly easily. I'm not going to pay five life at this point. I'll just sack one of my guys, but we need to just get this theater scores rolling. Ooh, that's another good draw. I want to start attacking him with these so my theater score can be a useful draw engine. scary for me right now. It represents a significant amount of damage. So maybe I should be scary. Oh, there's some life gain. Heck yes! You know what counteracts... Oh, that was bad. Why did I play that one? Face palm moment right there. I'm sorry, folks. Uh, we will eat the this go off. And then I'll just trade off this final payment. Probably don't want to trade off my two-powered guy. Well, that worked out nicely. Got him. And he paid five life, which really could help swing this race for me. Heck yeah, final payment. You rock. Five, six, seven lands. So I think it's worth it to just deploy as many threats as I can. Considering that he's out of cards. And I have a little spell in hand for if he does draw a card. are looking up, folks. Things are looking up. That is a really good draw. 
What creatures do I have in here? Ooh, I've got my carry on in. So yeah, I can afford to play the tap land because I'm gonna get back carry on in and uh, ministering probably. copies of it. Oh, that means I do want to knock one of the other land. I was worried I didn't have life gate, but I'm glad that I have these that carry on it to help me stabilize. <sighs> I just want to make sure I present as much lethal as possible. Because he can go up to 12, so I have 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Actually, 11 exactly, because I can't do 12, because this thing can only ping him one time. Okay. Boom, we got the W. Whew, what a game, what a game. Bronze 2, halfway done. Hello, and welcome to another segment of the Journey to Mythic. We're gonna keep this hand as black mana, as red mana, as white mana. We do need another plane to play the Senate Griffin, but we have a Bedeck. Ooh, another Orzhov deck. This is going to be interesting. He thinks we're playing Rakdos. Joke's on you, buddy. Huh. Do I need to get this guy down this turn? I think the answer... I do want to get this planes down so that I can draw planes and play that guy. I think I'm just going to take the opportunity to get this thing down. It's only one damage, and I don't have a play for next turn anyway. There we go. Hopefully it doesn't have grotesque demise. Yay! This guy's bronze one. He's really feeling feeling strong right now. That's going to be really good in this matchup. Let's offer the trade. Okay, three, two, that can trade with Syndicate. Ooh, that's a good card to have on top. This game's gonna favor us if it goes long, so we'll block. We can kill that thing for free with our dagger caster. We could mana screw him. That'd be funny. Maybe we were supposed to save that thing to kill the grasping throw, but I feel like we can just kill the grasping throw with something else. We'll play this one. Let's kill the grasping throw with this. And maybe that was a bad trade to take. Oh, we just need our dagger thing. 
whatever that card is called. guy hold up the deck to kill this thing definitely exiling that next next and then we'll just threaten the double block on his throw our hand is so stacked right now oh another throw what do you know throws throws as far as you guys can see I wonder if I attacked in, whether he would just like block, block. He probably just wouldn't block at all. Is it worth it to just kill his swamp, his black source? Almost definitely not. I'm just gonna kill a, a thrill. Ooh, that's got some kick, as they say. Well, this turn I'm going to be using my get the point. No attacks. But uh, next turn, if I'd make some trades, heck yeah. Dead Revels. Man, maybe killing his swamp would have been correct. That would have been really funny. Okay. He gets to eat my griffin, making Dead Revels a little bit worse for a, a while. Gonna go for the classic dude's one. You don't make this attack unless you have a combat trick or something. We're fine going to damage here. That is fine with us. We'll kill that thing. We kind of just want to make sure we get a scry. That's good. Got rid of that. Ooh, that's a really good draw. We'll get rid of that because we can just get it back. of death touch. Why would it tap my mana like that? This doesn't prioritize.
the ability to uh... yeah I'm more scared of that it's good to gain that life I like the spot I'm in because um, I have blade brand to draw every turn one out of 23 I'll draw blade brand and it just gets better and better, and I'll just one-sided board wipe in and win the game. So that combo is just really good. Also, he can't really play one toughness, guys. There's a guy. And now we'll start attacking with our messenger. Maybe he has the summary dismissal card. And summary judgment. Not summary dismissal, but that's fine. Him using that on a guy that gives me a 1-1 one, one is fine by me. I'm gonna hold lands in case he has another bell haunt. Six lands is really all I need. that one. Sacrifice that one. Saves quite a little bit of damage. I think we'll play our dagger caster in this upcoming turn. Chicken away. Never mind. Never a mind. I don't know why he isn't attacking with this thing. Maybe because he doesn't want to get attacked back, but that doesn't... Let's just put Blade Brand right on top. Or Theater Force, that would be another nice one. Definitely glad to get rid of that. That's basically draw a card, because that card's useless to us. I don't really want to trade off any of my ground guys for the Twilight Panther. We don't have to do this, but I'd rather do this because um, now I can just play out my hand and get really aggressive on him. Because he's used his couple of removal spells and I can just kill this, make a big attack. He knows my last card is the dagger caster. Rumble. Okay, 
that's fine. Oh. Okay. No blocks. I'm actually really happy that he did that because now I can just attack him. guy all the other guys I'm fine trading off but ministrant is a really annoying guy to hold back because then if he trades I get two one ones and I'm hitting him for five so he's probably gonna want to make some trades that's a fine trade for me two three four two two death touches definitely good for me when you think about death touches in combat you can kind of just think about them having infinite power I guess I do want to play my lands out because of my theater of horrors, so I can just ping them more. I don't want to have to discard them for some discard effect. That's a draw. I'm just gonna. Now I have something to protect in my hand, so. For two. I want to make sure I have one of these guys, so if he plays a big ground creature, I have an answer. That's not just my removal spell. Yeah, I'd rather keep this guy back on defense, because then he can't really attack me, because I don't really want to trade this guy off. Okay, another Twilight Panther. Twilight Panther's quite poor, I'd say. Just, like, sure, can trade with a guy, but, like, only if I let it, and a lot of my guys have more value than that. There is a Plague White. Ooh. That's going to trade with this thing. I like it. I kill his guy. I get a 1-1. One, one. I still have another one back. Trading with afterlife creatures is always the goal, pretty much. What if I scry to the bottom? I scry two lands to the bottom. I had a feeling that I had, but sometimes you can't be certain. I feel very favored this game. Now that I'm winning the race, I can just attack with everything. I just didn't want to give him a decent counter strike option. Let's go. Let's get ready to rumble. Sure. My two ones essentially unblockable. Can't block this. Oh, poor opponent. <laughs> it's gonna lose its power, dude. Why would why would you block with this guy here? Yeah, that's not what you wanted to do. That's bronze for you, I guess. Shame scoop. They're one of the reasons you do want to apply pressure. To cry. Yeah, that's part of the reason why cry is so good in uh, against Orzov, Waka Chow. Also, welcome to the stream, Waka Chow. The reason that I'm not super worried about cry is if you just look at the cards he's played. This card, this card, Senate Griffin. He's played, like, a bunch of cards himself that die to cry. And so um, I feel like his deck wouldn't run cry of the Carnarium, if that makes sense. But you never know. That's part of the reason why I want to kill him quickly and not just sit here. He already made the block, and now he's sitting here with the trigger on his deck. Oh my gosh, that's so bad. Oh gosh. So maybe he did that on purpose, but I doubt it. I highly doubt it. I 
Uh, he just needed that third black mana this entire time. So if he's not going to block with it, and he's not going to attack with it, what is he going to do with it? Attack for four, five, six. Two turn block. Okay, so you... Yeah, I gained indestructible. You got me. I feel like there would have been better times to use this, but he maybe he just threw it. Sure, you killed my flag white. So you basically use this as a removal spell. That's fine. I have lethal next. No, I don't have lethal next turn. Almost lethal next turn. Welcome, welcome, Waka Chow. That's a cool username. What a grindy game. Let's grasp and throw, because that'd be the most annoying card for him to buy back. Carry on Imp has been doing work. All of the work. Oh, poor Contoria Pegasus. Is he dead even with that? He blocked my two two-powered guys, I guess he doesn't die. Well, now he's dead. We'll do this rather than use the consign to the pit. In case he has like some surprise life gain. Even this way he'll block a ground guy, block an air guy. He has to block here and block here. Or he's dead on board. Or he has removal. And that's part of the reason why. Hey, we got him. Yay. Into bronze one. Gotta get out of bronze, folks. Gotta get out of bronze. Hello, and welcome to another stage of my journey to Mythic. I have skipped a couple games because uh, various reasons. One of them was super epic and one of them was super bad. But I skipped them for various reasons, and uh, now we are in silver, which is very ha happy to be here. Keeping this hand, pretty solid hand. And uh, playing against the player that is in gold, no less. So that's also exciting. The matchmaker is, uh, because we are doing so well in this league, we're five and one right now, it is uh, actually pairing us up pretty highly, so that's great. Should be some good competition. Nice to see a non-Orzov deck. We've actually played against Orzov four of the six matches. Five of the six matches? Maybe. This is our... Dang. How am I forgetting this so easily, but... We have played against a lot of Orzov, and our deck is better than the other Orzov decks, so feels good. I do want to draw a Plains this next turn so I can land this Senate Griffin. It would be nice. It would be. Okay. That could be a little scary. Opponent's probably really confused because we have a bunch of Rakdos games. It's like, why is he splashing Imperius Oligarch? And this player's a gold player, so they're like, he probably should know what he's doing. But this is my first time facing down a Rhythm of the Wild on turn three. I'll be using my Grotesque Gotomize if I can. That's going to get uh, demised, as they say. The mana efficiency! So good. Into planes? Is there anything this man cannot do? Topping that one. That's a great card deals with a lot of the shenanigans his rhythm would come up with. This is looking good, folks. Okay. 
so we'll deal with that soon. And by soon, I mean when we draw a land to play this consigned to the pit. Go for a Savage Smash. That would work out nicely for me. Okay. Fine with that. Blade Brand quite yet. We still have that combo potential in our deck of Daggerback plus Blade Brand. And uh, we don't have really enough of a threat to uh, We'll trade these off. If we play something really worthwhile, we can use Blade Brand. Oh, that's real bad. That's unfortunate. For sure. That was going to happen at some point, though. Hopefully he just blocks with Fairy Duelist. Thank goodness. Really not a reason to block with the other guy, but... <whistles> Disaster averted, yes! Holy smokes. Pretty happy with how that went. Not gonna lie. Milko Mita. Probably not as happy with how that went. But it's okay. He has next time. Oh, please, we need a land. Oh, goodness. We have got to consign to the pit that guy. Land me, baby. Land me. No, wrong land. Ugh. Ugh. That pains me. Okay, we're gonna have to use this blade brand. Oh my god, he has another one? You gotta be kidding me. This fairy duelist is disgusting. Okay, not the end of the world. So we will buff up our Imperius Oligarch. And then we can buy back some of our creatures at a later date. I kind of had to attack with everything to bait him into blocking because I really needed to kill that Bulwark. And this thing was going to die anyway if he didn't. Interesting attack here. Let's my dead rebels do some good work. Let's just get back these two. So we can play them both. End my life. Auto Tapper screws me. Ah! Why, Auto Tapper? Why? Why have you done this? Why hast thou forsaken this to me? Forsaken. Th I can't even double spell these ones because I don't have enough white sources. Wow, that's so bad. Davis did haste. 
If I had but only an imperious oligarch, I would be saved. Just whiff. 0 for 5. One time. Forsakenists. Welcome, Cornball. Oh, no! Oh, that is not what you like to see. Hey, there's a planes. So, uh, playing this guy. And playing this guy. And then I'm probably dead. Because this is like a 6-6 six, six haste. Maybe I'm not dead. I'll kill that with consign if I'm not dead. Oh, now it's a 7-7. Seven, seven. Fun, fun. It's a 6-6. Six, six. Is it another creature? I destroyed Milk Amida, but his stupid fairy duelists got me. So we go block, 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 block. This card is, like, highlighted. Makes me think he can cast it. I can do one, two, three, four, five, six. So I can do half his life total. Oh. That's not good for me, but it could be worse. Is it quench? What could it possibly be? Oh, he's bouncing. Oh, that's actually fine for me. Um, actually, it's horrific for me. Never mind. Do I have any answers to that? I'm eight eight. So, oh, I can just kill it. Oh my gosh. He's, he didn't give it the haste. Oh my goodness. We are in this game, boys. He just needs to have a couple dead draws. Focus mode. Oh my goodness. The clutchest. Oh my gosh, we could win this. We're still in this, boys. We're still in it. That's a half of his life total. Oh my gosh, the clutches were at one! Oh, he played that Gatebreaker Ram instead of doing the haste play so it could die to my sorcery speed removal. I was so confident we lost that. Okay. Yes! Yes!
Oh my god, we won! Oh my goodness, what a game. This has been a heck of a league. Heck of a league. Ooh. Hello, and welcome to another segment of Journey to Mythic. And uh, we are going to keep this hand. We've got this Ministrant. We've got a final payment. Ooh, playing against Rakdos. And we are 6-1 and one right now in this league, so we could potentially get that glorious 7 win. Not good when you lose before you can cast it. That is true, Cornball. That is very true. Probably should have played second swamp there so I could bedeck something. Yes, but I don't want to back that because I have a Ministrant that can trade with that very effectively, actually. Wow, that last game was so epic. I'm still riding the high, as they say. Ministrant. Ministrant dies. Bring back Ministrant. Oh, yes. Dead rebels. Oh, this value. The value is so sweet. So much justice. We've had some sweet games in this league with this deck. The Fire Wheeler? No. You cruel, cruel opponent. Don't you know that they're... Does this minister have a family? That's a fine trade for us. We'll use our deck to kill this. Actually... This draft format's a lot better than Guilds of Ravnica, I think. And that's just my opinion right now, though. Um, the reason being is that it just feels like there's a lot more stuff that you can do other than just playing the same type of guild over and over. I do want to draw another creature so I can get full value from my dead rebels. No! No fair! Hey, Plague White. I'm not going to play it, because then he'll just kill it with the Fire Wheeler. Which would be bad. Sure. So this turn I'm going to play this, and then final payment it when he goes for the Rakdos Fire Wheeler on it. Oh gosh, that is so sweet. Oh my god. That was a draft deck? Yeah, there's a lot of things you can do in this set of Inoshe that you just like, like the dagger caster. Uh, uh, the other thing combo is just a really nice, like you have to be able to use it properly. There's like more like grindy cards, but there's also fast decks. I just think that there's just overall high level of strategy. Oh, the bots vastly undervalue final payment. I was getting that thing like 10th. I think Cornball, I think that's why I played against so many ores of opponents, because the bots undervalue the good ores off cards. Right, I can't cast this. Oh, we put that on top, that's not good. Not a good sign. Oh, that's really good draw. Heck yes. So we're gonna get back Ministrant and that sweet, sweet life game. Carry on imp has actually been a real performer for me. So hopefully I don't die this turn, because if I don't, then I think I'll be in good shape. Am 
Imagine if I drew Blade Brand right about now. That'd be funny. Oh, that card is not good. I do not think. No, no, no. Well, I guess I will go with this card. I really want to play this card, but if I draw another land, I can just play this and a 4-drop. So maybe I play this card. That makes sense to me. Does that maximize my odds of drawing another land? Okay, we'll top that. If he has removal, it gets awkward. Which he probably does. But now we can go Ministrant plus Dagger Cash to make those tokens. Yes! More one toughness creatures. Dagger casters. Oh my god! Oh my god! This is the sweetest dagger caster of all time. Holy smokes. He just. Did, oh my. Yes! He concedes! Oh my gosh! That was the most disgusting splashed dagger caster that he did not see coming ever. Oh my god! That was like a three for one. Oh my gosh. Because of this sweet dagger caster, I will show the Journey to Mythic folks the prize opening ceremony. We shall now display the prize opening ceremony. We have got, heck yes, Squirrel Spellbreaker. Great card, great card. Already value, so much value. Oh baby. Priest played in some decks, I think. That was awesome, truly glorious. Looking at our profile, we advanced from bronze two all the way to silver three, thanks to that league. So very, very cool stuff. I hope you enjoyed that uh, segment of the video.